out any longer. All right. Here we go. Uh, this is the January 15th regular meeting of the Conservation Commission. Uh, I am, and we've got a quorum. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll start off with public comments. Uh, it appears there are no members of the public here tonight to give comment. So we will go right past that. Up to number two, we have our deep commissioner, Rob Clee, here tonight. Um, and uh, Mr. Commissioner, if you want to take the front row seat, we'd like to give you a little presentation tonight. Since you're new to the town, we figure we'll give you a little warm welcome. Uh, I know you went before the Woodridge Land Trust not too long ago, um, and I'm sure they gave you a nice welcome and a presentation about what they're doing in town. Um, we do work closely with the Land Trust on a various number of topics. Um, there's one actually on the agenda tonight that uh, we've been in discussions with the Land Trust on in particular. Um, but I figured uh, just a quick introduction to the Conservation Commission would be helpful for our commissioner. Um, Woodbridge has had an open space plan since 1965, so it's been managing and maintaining and keeping an eye on open space for quite some time. The most recent revision of that plan was in 2003, uh, so we're due for an update on the open space plan, and we'll be taking that up as, a, as the current commission uh, stands. Um, I thought it would be interesting if we went around here and just introduced ourselves um, and give an indication of our interest and experience in terms of open space or uh, land preservation. So I'll start off. Jason Morrill, I'm the uh, chairman of the Conservation Commission. I've been in T Woodbridge for almost 10 years now, um, and I've been involved in the Historical Society, the Clean Energy Task Force. Um, I was one of the founding board members of the Masaro Community Farm in town, and uh, that was a given a great boost by the prior uh, Conservation Commission members as well back in 2008. Um, and I've been an outdoor lover all my life. Grew up on 30 acres of wood, so it's in my blood. It's in my blood, so to speak. I'm going to jump over to Tom. Tom, why don't you give a quick intro? Tom Kennefick. I've uh, been with Bridget about 20, 20 years, something like that. And uh, previously served on the Board of Selectmen. And part of that board of uh, education, board. and like Jason, been uh, loved the outdoors, scouts all the way up, and uh, very interested in uh, working with uh, with you going forward, and uh, with the department on uh, any number of issues. Exciting. Thanks. Well, let's go right around this way. Um, welcome, Frank DeLeo. I've been a long time resident of Woodbridge. I've uh, worked with the rest, River uh, Restoration Committee on uh, projects uh, with Honolulu Dam removal, also I'm with the West River Watershed Coalition, and you can see my interest is around the West River. Yeah. I'm also a, a steering committee member for the new West River Watershed Plan that's uh, being formed, and that's... Uh, with the Connecticut Fund for the Environment. Long-time resident of Woodbridge, loved the outdoors. Um, I always enjoyed the trails in town, and uh, I enjoy helping keep them up now and then. And uh, that's pretty much it. Welcome. Thank you. And, and I um, used to be across the street neighbors of Maria Tupper, who I know is active in the West Yeah, she's part of the yeah. coalition. Yep. Great. Nice Great. people. Sandy Levine, I've been a resident in town for 40 years. Just interested in conservation. Thank you. Rich Kruger. I've been probably in Woodbridge about 10 years. I'm originally from Ansonia. I, I was a former mayor in Ansonia. 10 years on the board of Alderman, uh, part of the regional water authority we t we've been talking about there. Eagle Scout. Worked as a scoutmaster in Milford for 10 years a district commissioner in the thing, and I was on the first uh, conservation commission that we had in the city of Ansonia. Wow. Very good. Thanks, Thanks Rich. Robin Burke. Um, I've been living in Woodbridge for the past 20 years, and prior to sitting on this board, um, 
I was a member of both the Planning and Zoning Commission and prior to that, the Board of Tax Appeals. But this is the first environmental-based board that I'm a member of. Um, also currently living in my third home in Woodbridge, and ironically, two of the three both um, abutted the, uh, the Blue Trail. So I spent a lot of time walking the trails and um, love the outdoors and want to learn more. That's why I'm here. Thanks. Uh, Tim Kelly, I've been living in Woodbridge for 10 years, and uh, I'm also on the board for the Park Association, which maintains Alice Newton Park and a few other properties in town, um, and on the Masaro Farm CSA board. Uh, I like the outdoors. I take a lot of advantage of the trails in Woodbridge. I can with my kids and dogs and uh, have an interest in preserving that and, and making sure things like that are available for the future. Thanks, Tim. So you actually got the full slate. I got a full quorum tonight. So we got all seven of the members. Oh, Betsy, aren't you? Oh, I passed that. Staff. <laughs> but you're also, you know, you're you're into I, the I clean energy the, and all that I good stuff. I do the clean energy task force. And I'm on the board of the community. Should I give a quick background on? Why not? Why not? So I uh, Woodbridge resident since uh, May. So I've been. <laughs> I guess I'm. Over six months now, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, in New Haven and Westville for about nine years, and then in around New Haven area for the last fifteen years. So I grew up in Connecticut. I'm originally from Fairfield. My parents are still there. Um, uh, my wife and I have two boys, um, five, who's at uh, Gandhi Ellen Nursery School, and uh, seven and a half, uh, second grade at Beecher. Uh, Alex and Jake. Um, they're one of the main reasons I do my job is because I want to leave a better world, uh, you know, a better environment for them to enjoy. Um, and I enjoy bringing them out hiking, camping, fishing, boating, um, exploring all of our great natural spaces that we have in this state. Um, my back, my academic background, I'm originally a um, geology undergrad, which got me out an excuse to go hiking and camping on mountains and beautiful places. They tend to put rocks in beautiful places when you go to study them. Um, Master's at uh, School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, and then PhD um, in Industrial Ecology, which is the um, looking at industrial systems like ecosystems to see if you can close loops, create more recycling, create think creatively about materials and energy flows. That uh, my dissertation was on uh, Antarctica of all places, where the scientific research station is a miniature city where they behave like a backpacker and they track all the stuff they bring in and all the waste they bring out. So you can right. compare how the Italians, French, Germans, Australians, New Zealanders, Americans, and uh, British do the simple job of keeping people alive in a very uh, unique environment. And they do it differently, and it shows up in the use of materials and energy. And it was... Uh, and I didn't get to go to Antarctica for my dissertation. I went to all those countries to collect their data. They don't keep it on the ice. But my wife is a very good sport, and we went there on our, on our honeymoon mm -hmm. uh, on a trip to Antarctica. So I've, I've hit all the continents, which is uh, oh, wow. something that's exciting, too. And um, I was chief of staff uh, for former Commissioner Dan Esty um, since 2011, um, and then commissioner now for almost a year um, after he went back to Yale for teaching. I Governor appointed me back uh, last last January. I assumed the role February first of of 2014, and so I'm almost at my one year anniversary, and um, I get to stay on for another four years if the General Assembly confirms me, which will be happening in the next uh, month or two, and hopefully that'll go well. And uh, but um, it's the best job I've ever had, hands down. It's an amazing agency, and I'm happy afterwards to or in the Q and A talk a bit about the agency. <coughs> The breadth and the scope of things we do, but sure. So I thought I would kind of cover some past work of the Conservation Commission, uh, future work, and then talk briefly about what we're working on right this moment in time. Um, so I look back at the 2003 Plan of Conservation uh, and Development and the Open Space Plan, and the goal back then was to hold 15% of town property as open space. And through various diligent acquisitions over the years, um, the town currently holds 974 acres of protected open space, which is about 8% of the town's property. An additional 333 acres, or about 3%, uh, is undeveloped, but not currently protected, uh, which gives us a total of around 11% of open space, 
protected and on unprotected uh, in Woodbridge. Uh, there's additional open space in town. It's not owned by the town. It's utilities or, or pri private landowners. And that is a substantial sum. Um, there's 2,100 acres, um, amounting to 17% of the town, most of it water authority property. Um, it's been looked at over the years, carefully scrutinized to make sure it's not going to get developed. Um, so that's a, an important facet of our town is that a lot of our open space is actually not town property. And uh, most recently, we've assisted with developing the update to the plan of conservation and development. We did that uh, in, throughout the year of 2014. Uh, looking ahead, uh, more than just this year, uh, ongoing management and maintenance of the properties that we hold is one of our goals. So, uh, to have some clear documents that help understand what we have, whether it's wildlife, uh, other hab special habitats, ecologies, and whatnot. Have some nice clear documentation that help us understand what we've got so we can better plan. Uh, mapping the habitats, improving the greenway. So we do have fantastic trails throughout the town, um, but they're in some cases, crossing private properties. Uh, in other cases, there's big gaps where it'd be nice to connect them. So it would be nice to find ways to make a very comprehensive greenway throughout the town. And always being on alert for any open space that is meaningful, that becomes available, and finding grants and uh, other funding opportunities to purchase them as they come up. Currently, the Conservation Commission is working on uh, evaluating a parcel that has been identified as something that the town might want to sell. It's six, acre, six acres of open space, and there is a section that the greenway passes through. So this is a important topic for us to consider that we're talking about tonight. We've talked about the last few months, and I have a feeling we're going to be talking about it at future meetings. Um, trail walks. We like to host ongoing trail walks regularly throughout the year. Um, the more the better. So far, we've partnered with other organizations, the Land Trust, uh, Parks Association to help bring a, bring a greater group together rather than just Woodbridge standing alone gathering people. Um, more importantly, we need to clearly define how we're assessing our existing town open space and coming up with criteria and ranking and ratings so that if other opportunities arise, we can act appropriately and not just jump knee-jerk to various opportunities as they come up. It nice, would be nice to have a good framework to work from uh, and make educated and you know clear decisions so that everybody understands why we came to the conclusions that we did. Uh, and we're currently also keeping an eye out for grants. We know that the uh, Open Space and Watershed Acquisition Grant deadline is coming up. Uh, we'll be talking about that in relation to any opportunities we have in town. Um, and just making sure that all of the assets that we have are being maintained and improved judiciously and properly. Um, that's something that uh, as you walk the trails in the town, you might find that certain areas aren't maintained as well as others, and we want to address that and make sure we're keeping things up for the benefit of the public uh, and the owners that abut the property as well, for those that used to abut wood, uh, blue trails. You, you can totally appreciate being able to walk out of your house and just get on a trail and go and have it well blazed and well maintained. So that's a real quick summary of what we've been doing, what we are doing, what we hope to do. Um, so there's a, definitely an unending supply of things to focus on in conservation and open space. Um, the question that I had for you is that the state is talking about uh, updating its wildlife action plan. Yep. And this seemed an opportune time for the Conservation Commission here to better understand what the state's looking for so that we can actually provide meaningful input to that. Um, do you want to speak briefly about the Wildlife Action Plan? Sure, happy to. Um, it's our, our, our Wildlife Management Plan. It's uh, required um, by Congress in order for our state to be eligible for wildlife grant funding. So it's um, without this plan, we, are, we can't get the federal dollars that go to wildlife conservation. So it's, we revise it every 10 years. It provides a comprehensive strategy for how we're, wildlife is going to be conserved for the next decade. Um, what's interesting from the, the last plan to this plan, one of the emerging themes is actually climate change. And it, it was um, very, it was addressed in a very minor way in the, the plan from 10 years ago. It's now a key focus of 
our agency and much of what we do um, and our wildlife plan. It's, uh, we're seeing it in our species. We're seeing it particularly in Long Island Sound, which is warming. We are seeing shifts in, uh, in, pop, in fish populations. We are moving from a New England cold water fishery to a mid-Atlantic uh, warmer water fishery. We get more stripers. We get more, um, I'm not counting the tropical species you'll find by Bill Stone Power Plant, which is a whole other uh, issue, but um, literally, they're, the water is that warm there. Um, uh, but I'm, I am talking about the, we're no longer have a, a, a real lobster population. Uh, it's too warm, the sound. <laughs> Our uh, winter flounder species are, n nothing is disappearing, but they are, are now at, at levels that are um, definitely we're seeing declines and we're seeing rises in, in warmer water species. We're also seeing invasive species, uh, both mm -hmm. in the water and terrestrially. These are emerging issues that as the climate changes, um, we tend to see different types of mosquitoes, for instance. Mosquitoes can now, and other insects that can now live, not this week, but in our warming <laughs> climate, they can, they can handle our our winters, they can they can stay longer. Um, we see um, invasives from around the world coming to us. The Asian longhorn beetle, um, which decimated uh, Worcester Mass, is something that we are carefully monitoring. The emerald ash borer mm -hmm. as a, another invasive uh, insect species that does um, considerable damage. So that's um, invasive species and the changing sort of species types is something that our wildlife folks are, are caring quite a bit about. Um, we are, our goal is to, um, back to the wildlife action plan, we're on schedule. We've um, sort of generated the lists of species of greatest conservation need in the state, um, our key habitats, and the key threats that are faced by our, our wildlife. <coughs> we're now working on our list of conservation actions, and that's actually a great place where having our, our local conservation <coughs> commissions give their input on the things that, that they think are actions that we should be taking as a state and coordinated actions that we state we take as the state, the regional and the local level that can help benefit wildlife, help preserve wildlife. Um, so again, uh, our goal is to get it, the draft of it done um, in March. So we're, we're nearing the, the end of that process. It's, are we have a, a good website? It's, you know, easy. You go to the ct.gov slash deep slash wildlife action plan. It's, Tells you, it gives you the drafts of the things that we've already done. It, it gives you the opportunity to submit comments. And it really is looking for, for your input uh, at the local level, what you're seeing at the local level, how you think that um, the state and local level can work together to conserve uh, critical habitat. Um, uh, when you mentioned the open space and watershed grant rounds, that's obviously one of the, the, the our key tools in, in work in partnering with local communities municipalities and land trusts to preserve open space, preserve critical habitat. Um, our um, two main points that, are, that should be helpful, we now have a, a, um, an annual calendar, a, a regular set of grant rounds. The governor has funded it um, and consistently funded it. So it's no longer, oh, there's suddenly a grant and we have to scramble and throw something at it. It'll be here this year. If you're not ready this year, it'll be here next year, and it'll be here the year after that and the year after that. So it gives you the opportunity to be more strategic in your planning and not feel you have to rush something in or else you won't get a chance for the next four years. It's going to be every year, and the funding will be in you know the $5 million or so, um, plus or minus, and, and if not, higher. And that's budget, um, mm. which I'm not allowed to talk about. It's uh, <laughs> above my pay grade, um, the current budget situation. But this is a commitment the governor has to make sure that our open space and watershed grant rounds are consistently funded and, and have that regularity to help you yeah. in your planning. The other thing, and, and you mentioned it, is that we've, we're, um, we've had a, an improved sort of and more strategic view to how we are, are sending out and, and, and awarding grants. It's less of the give everyone a little bit. It's more targeted. It's more targeted to critical habitats, you know, key species of concerns. We're putting our, our dollars where our, our, our plan and our mouth is, that there is relative values to open space, and we want to, do the, to, to get the open space that is a critical 
habitat for a certain species that is a connection that is expanding existing corridors and pathways and, and or flyways. So making sure that the wildlife can move through their natural territory and not have those disruptions of, of roads or other things uh, or, or development in their way. And we're, we're looking at it from a climate lens as well. So a changing climate rising um, level, levels of the sound, we're thinking about not only protecting that coastal marsh, but that land behind the coastal mm -hmm. marsh as the coastal marsh will need to migrate in, in a certain direction. Similarly along river corridors and um, climate change has changed our weather patterns um, and it will continue to have uh, more frequent um, and more severe rainstorms and, and more uh, more patchiness in our rainfall patterns. So you get all the rain for the month in a day. So your four inches comes in in an afternoon instead of spread out over time. That requires different, a, a more resilient and more flexible landscape to accommodate those those changing stormwater patterns. Uh, it's something we're thinking about as an agency. We're actually thinking about in cooperation with UConn, and I'll, I'll sort of end here. Um, we've launched a Connecticut Institute for Resiliency and Climate Adaptation that is looking at how to make our communities more resilient from a, a natural systems perspective and from an engineering perspective. You know, there is work to be done on our roads and bridges and electric infrastructure and culverts and, and from a social and um, legal, and that's the one thing, I've, I'm also a lawyer on, on as well. Um, the, the systems that need to be in place to actually adapt to a changing climate from a social, political, legal, and financial perspective. How are we, how are we gonna fund this? How are we going to, um, what are the sort of planning and zoning things that might be changing as the climate change? What are the legal regimes that change? Yeah. Who is you know liable if I told you, if I allow you to build your seawall here and the wave energy crashes into your neighbor's house, which happens on seawalls, uh, who's at fault? Mm. Now I'm thinking like a lawyer, which I don't yeah. have to do. So I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll go down that road. I'll, I'll, <laughs> so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll stop there uh, on, on that. But that's um, sort of, again, and the, the spirit of our agency is thinking about these problems from the multiple perspectives. And climate change yeah. is a theme that, that touches on a lot of the things we do. Excellent. Excellent. Does anybody else want to ask some questions? Yeah, I got a few questions. Sure. Uh, one, one of the biggest things I see in Connecticut, and, and basically the Northeast a lot, is their lakes. All the lakes are getting invasive plants in there. I, I don't know, you know, what the DEP is. I think you're sort of caught into, I had a place on Lake Quasabog, and we got a permit at one year to uh, treat it. And then somebody came on the other side of the lake and said, we don't want this treatment. <clears throat> and they stopped the treatment. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I think it's a, you know, we're talking about open space, but lakes, invasive mm -hmm. species in lakes is really polluting a lot of the lakes in Connecticut. Yep. Oh, yeah. And I, I don't know if, you, you know, if, if, what the DEP's EEP plan is. Uh, we have a... Um, we have a, a lakes. We have a particular person who's particularly focused on on lakes and lake management because lakes do cut across a, a number of, of issues. So a lake is a recreational asset. It's for our boating and fishing and and and, and folks. It's also a, a natural habitat, which is you know, species that we care about live in lakes. It's also can be an economic driver to the state. People in coming out for tourism. Sometimes lakes also generate hydropower that they get the energy side of, of the house involved. Uh, on lakes and particularly on invasive water plants, we do, at when there is a lake association that asks for the permission, it depends, it always depends on, there, there are seven flavors of lakes that depending on who owns the lake, whether we own it or the, it's a private lake, or we own the bottomlands or the, and this gets into details that get way too complicated for me, but we generally support um, sustainable management if that's the right answer for a particular lake, whether it's using limited use of pesticides, they use some um, herb herbicides, sorry, because these are mostly plants you're caring about mm -hmm. there. We do, though, also allow people to go in with the vacuum stuff to try to vacuum out uh, invasive plants. We have a program on our state boat launches to 
really try to hmm. washing your boat actually is the best way to prevent the transfer of these things from one <coughs> lake to another. And we have monitors who you know both encourage you know people and wash stations to to, to wash it out. Funding is a challenge. Um, don't get me wrong. We also give out this past year we gave out grants for lakes to investigate their options and um, but it was a limited amount of funding. I think a hundred thousand dollars and we had more than three hundred or four hundred thousand dollars of ass. So we you know it's it is a an area of concern but that runs into to funding challenges uh, quite quickly. Um, but it is something that we are passionate about our lakes in, in this state and, and the people around the lakes are particularly passionate <laughs> about them. They don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call. So we uh, um, but we are we do work with lakes to find sustainable solutions to those challenges. The other the other issue that I that I see, and, and basically you can see it right in this town, is rivers. Mm -hmm. The Wepwag River. Okay. When when I moved into Woodbridge, I lived on the Wepwag, and you were able to swim in the Wepwag. But that's how the water, how deep the water is, mm -hmm. was. But as the years gone by, yeah. the sand made the river wider, and then it's not as deep. So not being that deep, you don't get the fish. Yeah. And it, it just, I mean, you're you're living here, so maybe you would just <laughs> want to take a look. There's trees down. I mean, I think we need to really look at our waterways. Maybe they got to be harvested. Some other stuff has to be taken out of them because we're not we're losing them. I mean, and there's really nobody looks at them. Yeah. I look at them, but I mean, I don't know. But any, the fishermen look at them. Yeah, you know, we stock we stock the wet walk, but I mean, it, it, it's, it's, the water's too low. You know, that really has to be dug out. But but I don't know if there's any grants or or something into the DUP has a fund or. Maybe they want to look at rivers. And, and, I know we're looking at open space, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> rivers are part of open space. And, and there's always the balance to be drawn between a natural system that is just evolving on its own versus how much you're actively managing it. And, and that, you know, there's always a, a, an honest debate that folks have on, on going in and, you know, actively managing a, a, a system versus letting it evolve as it would now. Question whether it's evolving because of human activity that we're more developed in Woodbridge or there's more impervious surface or other or more draws. I, I don't know that for a fact. I mean, whether that change in the wet log is natural and probably something we'd be less likely to, to tinker with or if it's because of other human-induced factors and that might be um, something we'd be we might be more likely, though the funding, um, there isn't, I don't know of specific funds for those types of, of river restorations other than if they're associated with uh, a flooding, um, floodplain. So it, it would, more often we have funds um, for river funds to restore what would might have been a channelized river, bring it back to its natural condition, restore what might have been a... Um, uh, uh, culvert. I mean, often we there was a period of time where we were burying our rivers, and you know, particularly in more urban, suburban areas, daylighting them, bringing them back to life is is where more of our floodplain river money goes to those projects. Less of of working in in what would be more natural river systems. But most of these rivers and streams are what feed the sound. I mean, in exactly. all honesty, you yeah. know what I'm saying. And for habitat, they need. The water too. It's not like it's just now. I hesitate to bring up a controversial topic, which is our <laughs> general permit for municipal stormwater, which um, does address the, that is one of our major concerns. Is if it is sand and silt and things that are coming off of our roads going into our rivers, that is the the main goal of that. What is a fairly controversial uh, general permit we've issued in that it does require more frequent street sweeping, uh, more careful management of our stormwater system throughout the state expanding the original <laughs> permit covered the major cities this is an expansion to cover the rest of the state um our initial uh draft put out there was met with a lot of resistance from from folks because um it was inartfully drafted um and it had it seemed to be imposing some very substantial um, financial burdens on on towns 
Um, we are in the process of, we've heard all that, those comments loud and clear, both clarifying and really right-sizing it. I mean, really having the towns work with us to target their resources to the most sensitive rivers, the most problematic storm drains, um, and fit their existing schedules of, of storm drain cleanouts or, or leaf pickup instead of in the state saying you have to do on our schedule and, and our time frame. Yeah. Um, but, but that is the, the other side of it is that stormwater runoff and, and is one of our major concerns. It is that sand and that, that layer of grime and nutrients and oils and other nasty stuff that goes right into rivers and into the sound and it's finding ways to manage that. There's, been, there's some work being done uh, in the New Haven area with bile swales and things like that, that to yes. keep the, the sediment from getting in there in the first place. So I, I believe there's some grants available for, for those sort of things. There is, a, and um, uh, I um, keep, stay tuned, because I, I think there's, um, in the governor's campaign... I know, they've already done promoting. a few down, down there. But, and, and there's been money for, New Haven has a um, combined sewer and stormwater system, we've, in the last few years, let um, municipalities in that situation use a percentage of our clean water grant funds to do just what you're saying, to yeah. do innovative green infrastructure, to really stop the stormwater from going to the sound by capturing it in with biologic systems. And lo and behold, you're also building beautiful green space in your city. It, it has this wonderful synergistic and, and multiple benefits. Um, there's a keep stay tuned there'll likely be an appetite for, for more of that because that's a new model that keeps that it out of the pipes and the gray system by building more green infrastructure that'll slow down the stormwater capture it before it becomes a problem that, that's one that's one uh, yeah. way of addressing it. the other thing is I, I understand they're doing deeper sumps uh, in, in uh, catch basins and things like that possibly to hold more yep. uh, sediment before they get in the other question I wanted to ask you was uh, habitat restoration grants, uh, specifically for all wives and uh, river herring and, and uh, that sort of thing. Um, and and uh, this you, is uh, for for pond lily dam for the West yeah, River. For, yeah, for things of that sort, right? Um, I think, and I, I I thought this might come up. My inland fisheries guys sort of gave me some notes. They think that once it's once the dam is is down, um, it's we're likely going to see the runs happen naturally by themselves. So I, I don't think they're going to be. Um, that's the major step in the right direction. Is, is yeah, it's, it's a major project right now. But is there any funding available to help with that? I, I think there's short some funds to get that project done. That, but to get it finished. Excuse me. To to finish it or. Um, well, let me check on the, on on that. On the funding, there's short some funding uh, with at the last. Uh, it, it's almost. Uh, it's it's almost completely funded, but uh, I, I believe they were short, and, and I'm not going to say exactly what it was, but some funds to finish that uh, dam project. I, I'll, I'll make sure. Let me make sure I give you a card, and let's send me an email, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll ship it up to our, our okay. fisheries folks yeah, to that, see what they. Yeah, that'd be good if, if you could look in. Because I didn't know they were short funding. That's, that's I, I think true. yeah, they're, they're short some funding on that. Uh, and if it's, Connecticut Fund for the Environment's uh, you know working on that project with. Uh, of course, the DEP, but yeah. uh, and I was at um, I think I think at one of the events, sort of celebrating that it was happening. I yeah, guess, that was a while back. Yeah, was a while back. That, yeah. that was when in the got, rain, standing in the rain at the uh, the Walgreens. Right, so. absolutely. <laughs> what happened was we got the initial funds from uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, which was like uh, six hundred sixty-six thousand dollars, but uh, the bids came in a little higher than that, and and that's yeah. where the uh, uh, the question is now. But that's that, there's a lot of work that's been done on that river, uh, with the tide gates and, yep. and now with the pond lily opening up the rest of it. And there's a, a brook trout population. I don't know if you're, you're aware of that, but there is a brook trout population, uh, probably close to right in back of the uh, um, historic house there, the Darling House. Mm -hmm. And if you ask some of the local fishermen, they they've seen that. There's uh, yeah. they're small, but there's brook trout there. Wow. Because because there's uh, some some uh, spring fed um, undercurrents there, so yeah. so the water's cool most of the time, even in the summer in the heat of summer. <laughs> yeah, there's some deep pools there.
Yeah, just a few. They used to call it the icebox. You're not giving away any uh, secrets, are you? (laughs) 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 Yeah, there are some deep pockets. Yeah, and and there are some. Yeah, and there are some brick trout up there. One of the amazing things I've learned in the job is is the number of dams we have in this state, which has, I mean, that was the main driver of our industrial revolution in the 1700s and 1800s. It was damming all of our our flowing rivers, and it's been our agency's goal to to undo as many of those as we can and or find fish passage or fish ladders or ways to get to restore those amazing Mm -hmm. runs, and it's... uh, um, Steve Gephardt, I don't know if you've ever yeah, run into we, him. Yeah, he, he got us started. He helped He, he, helped he is religious of, uh, about fish passage and one of our, our greatest Great sort guy. of advocates there for that and has done, has brought together, it in, does really take a village to get these projects done and brings together locals and community, the land trust, the, the nonprofits, us, the feds, the, whoever he can to... If it weren't for Steve and uh, Laura Wildman, I don't know, you probably know her also. She's an engineer from uh, Princeton Hydro. Mm. project probably never would have got off the ground, but he had a lot of, a lot of input in the beginning uh, of that uh, project. But anyhow, that, that's, uh, that's, another, that's another subject. Uh, the dam up in Seymour... Uh, the tenue. Yes, it's it's fa- the uh, passageway around it is fabulous. What's been done there? Yeah, I don't know if any of you folks have seen it, but they, they did a great and, job. And it, it's both a, a fish passage. And so Seymour's town seal actually has this dam on it. So it wasn't a dam we could take down because it was on the town seal. Um, so we built a. Oh, is that what that It's right underneath is, Route right? Eight, yeah. and yes. they built a a man-made river that goes around. The, the dam why. It fell. And, why. and they and they then created a linear park yeah right at water level and right along the the fish passage which is this new it's all fully handicapped accessible it has this grand sort of staircase though that goes down right down to the river and this is the Naugatuck that used to run blue and orange in the 50s and 60s and, and 70s because of the uniroyal oil plant up river and it's now someplace we were saying earlier. Salmon survived in there now. They, they stock, they've been stocked with salmon and they're surviving in there now. So, yeah, no, so and then this so is, it's, great. Yeah, it's, been, it's one of our success stories where we clean up these places and people are now turning back to the rivers. And you, and you mentioned uh, greenways and trails and that's another major focus for us because particularly linear trails, uh, some of the multi-use trails in particular where you get Three generations, the, the grandmother and the parents and the kid in the stroller walking along rivers that are now clean and fishable and swimmable is, is really, people are very popular. I can't, can't believe some of the big fish you're putting in this year. Well, that's some of our brood stock. I did, so the other thing is for those um, who are social media folks, the uh, our Facebook page for our wildlife and uh, uh, our wildlife folks has over 8,000 followers. It is the one, generally one of the happier uh, Facebook pages because <laughs> mostly people showing off the big fish that they caught. Uh, but we also do features about wildlife and uh, and uh, you know, other real birds and, and other things. But it's almost all fishy. The only way, place that gets a little snarky is where people are asking, where did you catch that? I'm not telling you where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, we're very protective of their... But we show where we, we... It's cheating. We tell you where we stock the fish, I think. That's cheating. But, yeah, yes. Some of the dams uh, you use for natural energy um, we do have we do have a, quite a few that that do um, there are um, first light but I'll turn back the clock with four connected light and power um, got out of the generation business they then sold off so they were forced out so yes um, was <laughs> I was being polite move on everybody's part <laughs> um, they sold off their assets to first light so they run um, um, they tend to be um, upwards of five megawatt or so. Um, um, there's right. some on the Hustanica, Candlewood Lake. Um, and so we have some. We have folks who've come in and tried to explore what dams, and we have the right head size, which is the space between the water levels, and what technologies. They now have these new technologies that are less of the spinning turbine. Sometimes they're... There's this um, European technology that looks like a big corkscrew that actually moves a little more slowly. There are folks who are exploring in-river, um, so not even needing a dam, just taking the flow of water and, and having it spin. Um, we, you know, it's they do qualify for 
certain incentives, renewable energy credits when, when they get built, um, particularly new ones. Um, and it is part of our all of the above strategy when we're looking. Um, and we have a, a nice partnership again with UConn, who has brought the Fraunhofer Center for Advanced Energy Technology. And they're specifically looking at small scale hydropower and these new, because these new small turbines, you can actually even put them in your um, your drinking water piping system that at the at the drinking water plant or the sewage treatment plant and generate power mm -hmm. that helps run the pump that's moving the sewage or, or whatnot. So on, on multiple scales and places, we're looking at, at hydro. And, and it's kind of... Well, isn't the UI allowed now to go back into generation, generating? A, a limit, they were given a limited amount. They were, and I'm going to... I know the, the section number, I don't remember. I think it was they got about 10 megawatts of... But it had to be class one renewable. They they're not they can't go build a oil fired fire power plant. But they've done the fuel cell array on, uh, in Bridgeport on their um, on their old landfill. Um, the, and, plant, the plant that's down there that uh, the one that's got the contamination or had the contamination. Um, maybe I'm trying to remember. So each of the utilities got 10 megawatts, um, yeah. and the state actually got 10 megawatts to direct them to do as well. So. Well, great. Thank you very much. We've taken way more time than I thought we would tonight. Oh, no. Well, I apologize for keeping you from sorry, getting home. That's okay. <laughs> no, I'm... So when I was, my wife's putting the kids to bed, so, <laughs> 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 so I, got, I got a reprise from that. And it's only five minutes away, which is a, a pleasure for me. Um, were there any... I didn't... If there were any quick other questions, I'm happy uh, to... One uh, regarding the, um, the wood board is... Uh, the Emerald Dashboard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is the state doing? Uh, number one is a preventive measure, and number two, when they have been found in the state. So we do. Um, we have. It's now. I think has been found in almost every county of the state. We put a quarantine down, and we try to limit the movement of firewood, which is main the main way that these these they live in. If you cut them down, they're in the wood, and then when you move it to another place, they can then yeah, right. inf infest that. So at the borders, we have. Um, now, when you go across borders, take a look for it. We actually have signs that say. I was going to say, I, I, I thought, because Maine had them years ago. Yeah. Do not bring firewood into the state of yep. Maine. So at the 84, um, more, we were mostly yeah. doing our northern border because it was coming right. from Massachusetts. Yeah. And we have the authority to, and we currently have the authority to hit people over the head with a slam chamber with a $1,000 fine. We're actually, this legislative session, this I can talk about, we're looking to, that gets at the major wood haulers, the the big you know people who are shipping in wood for either home eating or, or camping. We're now seeking the authority to give the seventy five dollar ticket to the family that's coming in and has a load of wood in their truck, and we say, hey, you can't do that. Here's a ticket, or and or. No, who's take watching it for that? Is that the state police or your? Uh, we uh, train the state. It's both, you know, okay. um, and we do. Uh, we we do the. Occasional sort of, we, we announce it and we do a concerted effort, you know, over a week's time, particularly during the start of camping season, we'll do a, a, an extra sort of enforcement, kind of like they do in the holidays for drunk driving and other things. We do yeah. we'll do a, a concerted um, publicity and enforcement campaign, but it's our NCON officers with state police. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me. And... And thank you, actually, for your, for your service, for the work you do. This is uh, an unpaid, thankless <laughs> job, but it's, it's, it's critical that we have folks like you who are, are, are actively um, conserving the beautiful spaces we have here and throughout the state. So I thank you for all the work you do and look forward to your comments and suggestions and apply to our grant rounds. They're, you know, we, okay. We're looking for good applications. So. And I have no influence whatsoever <laughs> over the, the two. I, I, I recuse myself because it would be Woodbridge. Um, but um, I do have, I actually had a little gift for <clears> folks <throat> I could leave here, which is a little um, bookmark, which has our website and our, our information on, on the Wildlife Action Plan. I'll leave them. You can, or you can. You it's can not a grant. You're, you're <laughs> I'm not leaving a grant. No. <laughs> <laughs> can I get your card before you leave? Sure, and I will give you Please. And, and know, it's easy. You have these. You, you might no, want to take some you. of those. Tra those are our thank trail you. things, and there's some information on our uh, coalition. Great. Uh, you're ready, right, Frank?
<laughs> Thank you very much. Have a great night. Uh, Thank good you. Good luck, David. Thank you, Ralph. Hopefully you'll get home as well. <laughs> Next official business for us um, is review and approve minutes from December 18th. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes from December 18th? I make a motion we approve the minutes. Thank you. <laughs> I will second that motion. Uh, is there any discussion about the minutes from December 18th? Any corrections necessary or whatnot? All right. Favor. Waiting for Sandy to amble back into the room so he can be part of the vote. We want him to feel included. <laughs> hey, Sandy, we're going to take a vote here. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, all in favor of approving? Aye. 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 I'm going to abstain as I wasn't here. Right, okay. Also, I have to abstain. So, two abstentions. But, four minutes. Here it comes. <laughs> Sandy, do you approve of the December 18th minutes? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, next you one. For my vote with you. I was waiting. It was not that close, but you're here. We need you on record. <laughs> uh, I got an email from the uh, Orange Conservation Commission that. They were interested in participating jointly with us on Connecticut Trails Day. Uh, that will be in June of this year. Uh, I'm trying to th see the exact date here. It's usually the first or second weekend in June, as I recall. Um, they're going to be doing a walk on Racebrook Tract, and we're wondering if uh, the Conservation Commission here would like to co-sponsor or co-host part of that walk, since the trail does go into race into Woodbridge on the northern part of its loops. Yeah, I'd support that. I'd, I'd, I'd be interested in uh, participating with them. I think it's a good opportunity to, to uh, join forces, sure. get get a little more publicity out there. Uh, we found it difficult on our own to get publicity, so anytime we can team up, I think it's helpful. I think, I think before the walk, we probably should talk to one of the scout troops. And, and spend a little little time painting it because some of the markers get the markers cleaned up. The markers need to be painted. Okay. Yep, we can certainly do that on on the, definitely the uh, Woodbridge side, if not all the way through. You might want to ask Mike Walters to look yeah, at all because the, I mean it, look it, at all it, before, and maybe even invite Mike on the walk with us. He'd probably, he'd probably enjoy that. No question. But it'd be nice to before we have the walk. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree trails, with that. Yeah, I think at least mark correctly. Yeah, and they're they're a bit more coordinated than we've been. Uh, they talk about having a sign-in table and maps being handed out as people come and go. Um, I think we have to get yeah. more. You know, we we do everything, and there's no publicity or it's the last minute thing. And, and, we, and we discussed that. And yeah. that's that's I think why if we can plant the flag in the ground at this point saying we're part of this that'll give us plenty of lead time to get everything in to order contribute any funds to the uh... I think so I think so she did mention that uh, there was $75 and they chipped in half and we chipped in half so this is it's a lot of money. very yeah, it's a lot of money <laughs> I, I'd like to know what they're going to get for $75 I, I think it's mostly just for the refreshments and maybe printing them Publicity. Didn't they say they had somebody from Yale came out? They did say that. I thought uh, that's what the seventy-five dollars was for. A, a group contacted a woman from Yale to lead, a, lead part of the hike. We, we yeah, still have refreshments left, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there'll be any good by then. <laughs> yeah. What do we have? We had brownies. We had there's we had tra brownies. trail They'll bars and bottled yeah, water. Yeah, we didn't have brownies. We, we had those the granola bars and bottled water. <laughs> right. They should be good. good. By June? No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> How old are they? Uh, I so, thought it might be a good idea also. Maybe we could reach out to Yale or to um, Southern. Uh, maybe have a... Uh, it'll be during the summer, so there'll be yeah. an abundance of at least birds, other wildlife possibly. Mm -hmm. Maybe have someone come along, maybe a... Uh, 
naturist or, yep. or yep. ornithologist or someone who's familiar with the different types of species we may see along the uh, the trail. trail. That's, but that's always one of those things. You're out there walking the trail and you see uh, a particular animal or uh, maybe a bird that flies by a hawk or uh, mm -hmm. something like that. And it'd be nice to know what they are. And yep. uh, I thought that might be something as I was looking at reading the uh, letter they had sent to you. Uh, we're paying seventy-five dollars for this I, person I, from I Yale. Maybe we could get a little yeah, bit more out of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. would, would add you know, um, And I know they there's like an ornithology section or uh, department at uh, at the uh, Peabody. Maybe. Uh, or maybe Connecticut Audubon. You want, or maybe Connecticut Audubon. Maybe I could reach out to them to see if they have any kind of program. Yeah. Could you do that? Could you reach out or to have resources? Connecticut Audubon. You would think maybe Connecticut Audubon might have some type of resources. <coughs> I know they do uh, annual bird counts and uh, things like that. So yeah. one of Milford has a nice um, observatory, and I've been out there uh, doing photography. So yeah, at the end of the road. Yeah. Right. Where's that? In Milford. And the Broadway. At the end of Broadway, if you, there's a, on the left side, it's private houses and there's a gate and it's a, uh, uh, yeah, the Audubon a Society, yes. And, but, but if you go to the right and you go straight through, the Audubon Society has a beautiful building back there. Okay. And um, the balconies you can go out on and you can see. But, but a lot of that is a lot of seabirds. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, oh, Milford. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it sounds like we're all in agreement. Now, we are we to... talking about uh, starting at the orange side and going to Woodbridge, I take it, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. I think we should discuss that. If maybe well, the, the that side that's the upper. Orange side. <laughs> well, I think it's probably easiest uh, if we're joining forces with orange since the parking is on the orange side, but also it would be a great opportunity for us to, as people well, come well, in, we may, let them we know may that... We do the same thing as, we as did before go. is have a, have a bus... Or, or just make people aware that it's more than just orange here. This is, why this can't, is actually Why can't we towns. do it from both ends? Well, because the, the parking is tough up, up on the other, on Fairview. In other words, there's, there's no really parking. Just it's The just orange the, uh, got a nice circle. parking area. But it, it'd be and, nice if we, we had... I, I think <clears> there's a possibility. I understand that the senior buses, Woodbridge is going to buy them. They're supposed to buy them this year. Can, can you look into that? I've heard something about it, but I don't know what's happening with that. Because I, I tried to get them last year. Yeah. And, and they're, they lease them from New Haven. So I couldn't, I couldn't get them. So we had that school bus. All right. So we can ask if it would be helpful to have a shuttle at one end. I, I think it would be nice. I don't know about the rest no, of it. No, no, I think, I think you Because right. this is a little tougher than the other one. Because we went down. Yeah, I walked both ways. This we're so. going up. It's all uphill. Okay. <laughs> so, but wait, if you, Tom, you can reach out to Connecticut Audubon to see if yeah, somebody's available. Yeah, I'll see if I contact them within the next couple of uh, weeks. And we'll get the exact date nailed down, but it sounds like we're all in agreement that we'd like yeah. to participate. Yeah. All right, I'll get back to Sharon and let her know. I make a motion that we go along with the orange people. Second. All right. <laughs> Wait, since there's a motion, we will act on the motion. All in favor of the motion of coordinating with Orange on this walk? Aye. Aye. All right, great. You know, unanimous. All right. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, next item um, is our friend Enoch Drive. All right. So last night um, at the Board of Selectmen, the topic of Enoch Drive came up. And I presented what we had discussed and decided at, at our December meeting. Um, but prior to that, just literally 24 hours before that presentation yesterday, some additional information came out, which um, prompted me to ask the Board of Selectmen, can we, as the Conservation Commission, come back and rediscuss this property? Because it might change our decision. Um, and that point of information is that the trail is very far from the pedestrian easement on the private property. And I think, at least certainly I was under the impression during all of our discussions, that the pedestrian easement one in the same. That the pedestrian easement on the abutting properties 
connected to that blazed trail. And when, in fact, it does not. Doesn't. So I had, I was out there today. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Uh, so I, I came up, I parked on Apple Tree. Okay. Okay, walked straight across. Because based on the map, that's look, that looks like where it comes right out opposite. Right? Apple Tree? That's it, It's just slightly down the street from Apple Tree. Apple Tree... So so I went, I crossed okay. the street from Apple Tree. I parked on Apple Tree, walked okay. across Amity. Yep. Couldn't find any way to get <laughs> up there other than scale yeah, that little... Yeah, steep, yeah. So I'm over the, the stone wall, or the, actually the, and the, the metal fence, fence that was stepped over. And on, on the left side, there were a couple of holes, looks like, where they dug out yeah. something. And uh, so seeing no trail in front of me, I went left... Mm. Maybe a couple hundred feet, saw no trail. Went right, a couple hundred feet, saw no trail. And then just went up and back and up, and all the way up until I was pretty close to the house. Did you find any blazes? Hill. Could not find okay. any, yeah, yeah. any semblance of a trail. So the, if you parked an apple tree, you need to cross 63, make a right, and go probably five or 600 feet down the road. To get to the to get to the trailhead. Is and, that the trailhead, or is that the? It's the well. It's the trailhead. The it's the trailhead for. There's a sign that says Woodbridge, uh, Woodbridge Land Trust, and the the trail's name is there. Further past that is the actual gas line and the easement. Okay. Um, so on this map that on, I passed around, it it helps you visualize the difference in distance between the blue. Blaze trail entrance and the actual gas line. Oops. Yeah, and now it looks like the well, bulk of the it easement? goes. We, we, the, see the gas the, line. The easement is the gas line. Yeah, the easement is the gas the line. The easement is a 10 foot wide pedestrian corridor that is right on top That's of that gas easement. line. So, so, the, so the blue trail is not even close. Not even close. So we don't need any <laughs> easements on this property then. Uh, being that the town owns it, we don't need any easements right. on our part. But that trail, as you can see on that map, it so on the map, the green, light green, are the town-owned properties. Mm -hmm. The white is private. Right. So it's crossing private land. There's a gap. But that, quite maybe a bit. it's got to follow the gas line. Uh, by by law, it would. But there's a number of issues around that. Um, the corridor as it stands goes right smack dab through the middle of a person's yard now technically by law we're allowed to walk through their land but to be good neighbors it's not all that nice to which is then the gas the, the, the gas, gas line gas line it is the or the blue trail the, no, gas, the gas, gas line, line. Gas, the line. gas line that that uh, that's open space uh, it's been cleared um there's uh, it's somebody's. I, I've heard that there are dogs on the property, fenced through an, an invisible fence. So you'd be walking across that invisible fence into somebody's seemingly yard if you followed that gas line trail. And then once you hit the slope, that steep slope, you're going to go straight down that slope. And nobody in their right mind would build a trail straight down that kind of a slope because you'll turn it into a river and create so much erosion that it would be a disaster. But but it sounds like if you use the blue trail and you start doing something with the blue trail, then you still need access for these these other people. Right. Because you never on, had that. It starts on private property. Though. Right. It, yeah, it crosses private property. And it crosses private places. property, goes <clears throat> on a town line owned, back on a public property, right. pri private property, then back onto... The, Town owned, and then through the person's yard. It doesn't make right. sense. You can't. You, you can't. You can't walk that because you can't. You, you 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 can't walk on somebody else's property. Well, you can't. The, you can't walk. I guess with an easement, you could. And as long right, as the, the easement, and as long as the trail is in the easement, which well, it is not. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But, yeah, but another, it, yeah, if you're on the easement, you can walk right right through because you have the right to walk right through. But if that blue trail, the way I look, so like it dead ends on someone's private property. No. Doesn't it? No. Well, it doesn't dead end. It crosses it. it, it oh, that's root, it. But that, that point at the end that is route point six. Point crosses, it crosses right. twice over here, right? It crosses here and crosses there. Over here. It appears the like the public, you really right? need an easement right the here. The green is the public. 
that's at four fifty. The white is the private. Right, but what I'm yeah. saying is, if you if this you way you go down there yeah. and you, you can't forward, walk this can't section here. Do they have an easement on this section here? No, no, no. that's the problem. So, so what I'm saying is, it dead ends right here. Correct. Well, well it dead ends it, at the beginning. It dead ends well, at, the at, at, be, at the beginning too. It's the beginning well, also. I mean that's where it dead ends. Dead right. ends. I mean you could walk from here to here. Oh, you can. not Yeah. This is right. right. Oh no, you can only they, walk to it's here. Not illegal. Trip. Right. How, it's, it's how long is the, it? the landowners are permitting the passage of public? Through the blazed blue trail at this point in time. Are they yeah. officially doing it, or did they they just don't? They just make, don't make an issue of it. Correct. How long is have someone they can move in there and make an issue of it? it you know, right? It's but it's it's, uh, it's been so in the deeds um, since the early '80s. The blue what, trail has no this this pedestrian easement that's in place right now, which what was put in place when, when the development was made. Um, the blue trail, my understanding. Dates back at least to that point. Um, I don't know the so exact. So the pedestrian history. easement you're talking about is the gas line. Yeah. Okay. So, but there's nothing official anywhere as far as the blue trail, other than people just Walk don't in. make an issue of it. Correct. Yeah. So by the town holding what it does right now, it's protecting the little piece that we can control. Uh, I, I don't see. If you don't have well, any Mike protection was here, last here. time he, he said that this gas okay. line goes pretty much to the middle of someone's backyard. It does. So they don't mind that the trail goes around the perimeter of their property. They would rather have people, if they're going to walk this trail, take that section, you know, and just go around go their around. yard. Right. And that's, I think, what this is showing. Rather than going through the middle of their yard, it's just going around right. the edge. Because if, if the private owner did make an issue of us using that blazed trail... The only alternative is we're going to go right through the middle of the yard. Yeah, but let me say, where, where are the houses here? Uh, yeah. They're these squares here. There's one house. Okay, that has no house. Okay, but how about over here? There's no house down here. Well, well I don't understand why they just can't walk through here. 450, right through 450. If there's, I, I thought maybe when you're going down the gas line... That somewhere along the line you're going to go between some houses. You will, on the gas line. In the beginning. Of the, at the top of Round Hill. So the left-hand the side, right -hand side that, that red dot is the top of Round Hill. Right. Yeah. So, so, so there's only a little portion that year. And what's this green here? Is that city owned? That's, that's town, town owned. It's a half uh, point five okay, seven. So, I mean, it doesn't have to even, it can just go down the, down the what do you call it? The gas line. No? Right, but the gas line goes through. It's too steep here. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a yard at your house? Yeah. Imagine somebody walking 10 feet out your front door. And all day long, and they're looking in your window while you're eating dinner. And when you have a family picnic, you've got people walking through the middle of your family. There's only picnic. ten feet here. Well, they're going to walk. Yeah. They're going to walk through anyway. I don't understand what you're talking about. Look at here's here's where the blue trail but, starts. But but the the wooded section. The, this follows a wooded section. Once you get out of the blue trail, and keep in mind the the blue marker on here is probably thirty feet wide. As it looks on this map, right, but but what, what, let's say you start here. Yeah, it almost looks like the blue trail goes in by the gas line. It, it does. It follows the gas line off the map, okay off this printout. But I don't see where there's any problem just following the gas line and then coming back over this part of the there's trail. There's somebody's house is right here. If if you were to you Rich, right Rich if you walked, if you were standing right, on that red right, dot, going right through, yeah, the eye, and you house. looked out there, and you looked along the gas line, you you would. Swear to God that you are about to walk through somebody's front yard. But this is all town property. But you have the but right, right to do that. Nope. They, the, the gas line is there. Legally, you have the right to do it. Yes. Right. Yes. That you have the right to do it. Uh, going right. through here. Hasn't okay, it been back going on forth. this time? If the easement exists on the gas line? No, people haven't this walked that somebody's route. house on this side. Because people usually side. take the blue side. Everybody takes the blue But they could walk route. that route. Yeah. They could. Yeah. I don't think too many people use the blue trail up there. Well, that's part of an, uh, no, that's a completely you know, a related issue. Is that we want people to actually use the blue trails. We want people to. So use I would, our trails I would, as I well. would move the blue trail to go along the side of the, the pipeline. Well, the, here's the other issue: is that once you hit that steep section, you can't. Yeah, yeah but trail, then, then move the trail. Have the trail, trail come out, and you come out here. You're going on. You're going on people's property right here. Am I mistaken? Well, that's. At, at the, the parcel at issue, right? Yeah, right here. This, this is. We, we don't, don't own that. 
Right. We're, we're oh, 450. So right. what if the trail came? 450 is it? It's like here. marker, but yeah, that. This it's all this wooded. Is, this is yeah. Right. This Correct. Is yeah. Okay. 450 is pretty much all wooded. It's all wooded. Oh, yeah. yeah. What if There's the trail no came here like that for years? Well, they've been coming down this way. No, they, right. they, so the that's issue is that if you follow the gas line, the gas line Actually, that's literally goes walking. straight yeah. down a hill that's pitched at about 50 degrees. So okay. that can't be and, and if you that's blaze a trail true. straight down a hill, all you're doing is making a river. But but I'm saying, that so don't go can, over here. Come down here and go here where you... Because you you're going on this property without, you don't own that property anyways. But, so Rich, if you followed the gas line yeah. from here down to here, yeah. you're going to create a 10 foot wide river. Right now it's, right down right down now it's not a trail. You need right? switchbacks. This is town No, it's trail. So this trail yeah. would have to do right. this. Right, right now the, the gas line is all through trail, woods. No. There's it's, no trail there. Yeah. And not only that, it's very steep. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, it, it's not. Sad. It's not a place. It's not where, cleared. It's not clear where you could have a trail. Well, the blue trail so part, steep. from what I understand, is not clear either. It's not really that clear. Okay, so it's not that clear. No, it, it was yeah. freshly blazed by the Boy Scouts two weeks ago. Yeah. So once you find the entrance. Yeah, so I guess I thought, <laughs> based on this, it looks like it's right across the street from the Water Authority entrance. From, uh, yeah, from where Apple Tree is. That's uh, the Apple map I was looking at. Yeah, and it's, is there anything here? So I need to go further down. So I'll do that tomorrow. Yeah. But again, so I guess the question is, if we do we, are we, a, the town's looking to sell? Right. Yeah. This piece of property, yeah. 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 Which is a property of what? Six acres. Okay, yeah. I've been on this property. And I, it's the highest point, right? Okay. Yeah. Is one of the uh, one of the adjoining one of the abutters might be interested in purchasing that property? That's what I've heard. So, so yeah, We're we're talking about. We're afraid we're going to lose all access to it because mm -hmm. of that, or I mean, the we're, town could make a couple hundred. Thousand uh, yeah. dollars or more, it's a buildable lot. Right, right. it's got one semi flat area. If we top. can put in some type of an easement along with the sale of it to say that the blue trail is going to continue along the edge of it and then take so, so that the, money and set it aside to, so it could be used for something else. Right, so the issue. Yeah, but the land is more valuable don't if they don't have an easement on it. Because well, that, that way you're going to have two easements. Right, but then we're basically we're just basically cutting ourselves off altogether. No, we're not. I think you, you walk the you walk the pipeline. We, we're we're trying to decide. I don't. Is it? It's not really. Feasible it's not. Or it's or not really. Like you said, it's not feasible. It's too steep. No one's going to walk it because it's too steep. Why don't, why don't we put an easement on it? Why don't we do that? Walk the pipeline and see really what. It well, they is. did that. Well, you can't I think, walk the pipeline. I think, uh, huh? You can't. You walk can't the walk the pipeline. That's the problem. We not, but so between it being pitched like this, it's full of briars and brush. It's not cleared out as a trail. They they put the gas line in and then just all overgrew. Yeah. Right? It's just yeah. all overgrown. So go ahead, Ron. So as far as I can see, the gas line is not an option because of the steepness here. So that's not an option to put the blue trail there. Realistically, no. Realistically. And do we have an easement for this section? No. no. There's no easement no. at all. So even if we put an easement on this section, which is what we're discussing, right. you, we, it would be the, the people who own, right, it would be almost pointless unless we get an easement for this section on this property. At the right. right, exactly. So really we should see first if people will grant an easement, the people, the owner of this property will grant this easement because if they won't, you need one there's no over here point too. in getting one here. Yeah. Well, that's the same owner. Why would, he, same why would they grant the easement? We've been using it for years. Why, why would they grant the easement? Like no. They wouldn't. I mean, if it was me, I wouldn't grant an easement. So that they, well, it's whether or not they want to help protect this. To agree no, I, if it was me, I'd say walk the pipeline. I tell you, Sandy, if you stand up at that pipeline, you're not going to walk it. You, you are not. You, actually, you, you will not want they the public. They won't say that, Sandy, for several reasons. You, One is the, but, but the pipeline the has the easement closer. for people to walk. Am I correct? Correct. It's in the deed. But it's not it's walkable. In the deed. It's in the. It's in at the this deed. point. Right. right, but it's not walkable. Has, has okay. anyone approached ten feet wide? So that means that this land, the middle of their front yard. Is going to have to have markers ten feet wide, going right but down I'm like a runway. Where? I've been at this property. Have you guys been around here? All of this is a giant. That's wand. the center of their yard. They're not going to want. It's about. They're not going to want. It's too close to their home. Too close to their house. Of lawn. But who That's owns my this? Question. 
Well, they get some easement. So the property own. line is right here. If the, I, I guess the way I would understand it was that the town would say, we'll give okay, you so X amount of dollars to put an easement on your here? property. Yep. Yeah. So it's costing the town money. Then. So if they, yes, yeah, so you have to, have to question, find the easement, that. right? Wouldn't you, you would go to, you would approach the landowner to say, we'll give, I think when we did the easement, purchase the easement down here yeah. on the property, we pay the owner of the property $300,000 for the easement. And then when they sold the property, the house would only be able to be used. They could never change the house. And it would have to stay as the, the, the construction that they have. So I guess initially, if you if we the town paid the owner for the easement, but then anybody who moves into this house has to know, you're going to have people walking through your property. Mm -hmm. But you're going to pay for an easement. Only and for the so person who owns it's it. It's more than the lot. <laughs> well, no. no we didn't no. put a price on the easement yet. But there's I mean, no so, point in having an easement no, no, on I'm one saying, lot for that when you don't have property. it on the other. Uh, because right, this, right. this owner at any time could say, we're not going to buy the easement the from, the from the per How much do you think the lot could sell for? 200000 Right. And if the Six person acres, wants, I don't know. they just gave one right. person 300000 It's unavailable. No, they're not going to Well, let me ask this. What is the alternative? The alternative is to do nothing and hope that they allow, as this property owner has, the passage on the Blaze Trail. That's the only alternative. It's that or place easement. Before you set, sell, but the problem is that we don't have an easement on the connection, which leads out to Amity Road anyhow, right. nor the section over here between the town and par parcel of what's currently owned by the town. So, by so at any time, even if you put an easement on here, you're not getting anything if you don't have the connection. Exactly. Theoretically, that's right. So, so by holding the property, we're keeping what we've got. we want to sell, right? Um, so actually, in, in this limited capacity as it is... But but the issue is if so the person who owns four fifty, okay, which goes all the way up to here where we start, mm -hmm. we we lose entrance the entrance and the exit, and all we have is the little piece that goes through the town on property. Right. So so to, theoretically tomorrow, I could go over there and they could have. A gate up and say you can't cross my property anymore. Right. Right. And, and then you don't and have. They could have a gate down at the bottom, right? You right at the beginning. Of, you got right at the beginning. There's a gate. Right. Exactly. Right. Private exactly property. Right. So, right. so maybe it's better. So now to I need to walk back up the road where I went in across right. an apple tree, and yeah. then I could walk halfway up the hill, right, and back down. Because yeah. that's all I'd have. That's all that's you right. have. Now, you don't have your connection. From what I understand, if you cross over, now you have to have a permit because it's. Because it's water company property. Yeah. So unless you have a permit, you can only go to Amity Road. Right. And if you don't have the permit, then you got to walk up to Castleway. Right. Walk along Castleway yeah. and well, then enter at Sperry, Sperry Road. You, that's right. Right? So Is you, that the way it works? Off this that's way. You need a permit. Technically, you need a permit. You Although need a permit. realistically, if you're just a... Family, you need a permit. You need a permit. Or you walk up, or you walk Amity Road to Castleway to Sperry. Across the street. Yeah. So yes, it connects to the Water Authority. The official town greenway ends on Castleway. If we could find a way out Apple Tree, we could cross 63 to Apple Tree. But again, we would lose the, you would lose access to, the trail at the top. Right. It's it's it's. Either end. Is, well, you'd lose is, both. You'd, yeah. All we you'd have to walk up the road and create a new entryway, so you could just wander around on the hill because you got nowhere else to go. Right, unless we were able to obtain an easement, which that, would cost that money. Them. Right, but the town is already losing money every year by every maintaining year. this property and trying with the association that it's in, trying to maintain the the road, the driveway. Right. So the road and now they want to they want to they want to redo the road, and that's going to cost the town a bit of change. Let, let me let me ask you a question, Tom. You you did how, how many is that a mile and a half in there? What do you think? No, no, no. no that no. that's half a mile. Yeah. Half a mile? Not even. So not actually, even that. Not even a half a mile. No. Yeah. So so it's really so so we're just the end of this this property that we're talking about is is increasing the trail by a half a mile. Am I correct? The trail can stop at Roundtree. Well, I think the problem is you lose you you lose the green. Lose the you, you lose the, you've got a gap in your greenway. That's the because there's problem. no way around it. You'd have to you'd have to come you'd have to come off. You'd have to take the road down. And anybody right into Bethany. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
Well, you got to cross. Telling, you're asking people to cross six cross feet Amity three Road, by yeah. foot right. without a traffic on a, signal. On a turn. On a turn. And right. then right. get a permit. Right. To then access to get onto the water company, company property, property. and they don't just give out permits to anybody. Goes. No, you got to go through a complete background if, check. Yeah. If we I mean, connected it to, to, to no. if we but I think the issue is you lose the greenway. I mean, right now, which right, right now, if you connected it to this, right now it's just a call like, it a greenway. It really isn't because if you need a permit to cross the other side, isn't the gas company supposed to maintain that right away? From what I understand, every five years they're supposed to go in there and cut. Well, I think that they don't because of the grade. If they cut that grade, it's going to just create a swale straight down the hill. But even if they did yeah, cut it, it's still they not have walkable. Some it's way not walkable. There's a problem there to get point. in there. Even if, but, they maintain, even if they cut But if, if the greenway... I think that could be, could be arranged that they could walk that and co correct the steepness of the, of the grade. No. Whether you, well, you don't have to go it's straight down. Grade. You can go at an angle... And back and forth zigzag. The, the well, gas company's not going to re re dig there. But you I'm not saying dig it. Yeah. I mean, but we, you could, do, we could continue, we could do. You can that. do switchbacks. You're right, Sam. You can do right, switchbacks, but, but it's but, on but private property. But it's only property. a ten foot wide piece of land. So let, let me ask for me to you is an unmeaningful switchback down a uh, pitch of 45 how, degrees. How about this, Jason? Say instead of just going over here, which it doesn't have, can this come out here? Yeah, it could. It could stay on town property, and the only part that's not on town property would be connecting the top of Round Hill and 31 Enoch. I, I could see, you know, that this is going to become a problem, because I, I don't think the people want to sell this. They don't want us to sell this. There's no question in my mind that's going to be an issue. So I think that the people here that the people own the other people, land, who doesn't want us to they're going to buy it. No, no, they're not going to buy it. I, I think so they're going to. So, Latronica is the property in question. They're the, they're the people that I this, think they're this crosses. They may be interested in. And, and as soon as they find that they don't have a permanent easement, easement. Technically, the easement is the pipeline. Am I correct? Exactly. That's correct. So, if we were to say that's our greenway easement, it doesn't break the greenway, if that's technically that's the easement. Uh, am I, am I, even though we can't use right. that section of it, as long as, gear and as long as it doesn't break the greenway, that's that's my, that's you, you know what Tech, I'm getting you at? You have it, yes. Right. All right, we can't use it, we probably aren't going to be able to use it anyhow, as long as technically we're not you breaking can, the greenway. You can greenway. walk the blue trail, the blue, this is walkable, and I'm sure that's why it's come out the way it has, because you can't walk Right. The, the, I understand, you but you can't get from Let me ask you this. Was it walkable before the Boy Scouts went in there and cleaned it up? Yes. Walkable, yes. From yeah. a perspective of the Follow, grade. Following yeah. the, for the perspective of following the trail, it was very difficult because the blazes had been faded but the, out. But from a, the perspective of the grade, you could walk it. From that, it wasn't too steep. Correct. Because of, because of the switchbacks that go. Right. If the greenway would still exist, I mean, I, I know this doesn't. I know what you're talking about. But but I know it can't be it can't be used anyhow. But as long as the greenway is not broken, the property will be green. sold. It's not going to matter to us. Yeah, a lot of people. You right. know, well, if there's a technicality where the greenway is broken, I understand. Any place time the greenway gets broken. It means it, it's not a greenway anymore. It's not right. continuous. But it's, really technically, the greenway is through through the gas line. I mean, even though I understand it's not being used, it, it was supposed to be there, and that's not where it's going. But technically, that's where it is. Because right. the other, the other thing, you're going through people's, 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 people's property. property. Right. We don't, you didn't have a right to go through the Right. Property. We didn't have the right to go through people's right. property. So I think, so I think I'd like to see the town sell it. Yeah. Right. The and money, it, reduce the taxes. Areas, it's, as long and as the greenway is not broken. Or right. But it's good. I, so I guess, so I, guess I understand what you're saying. Technically, it's not because but, this but is it, the greenway. But at one, but any particular time, the property owner can say, I don't want you walking. We're not going to be walking. No. no. If, if you want to continue. It, this won't be okay. able to be used if they say This will no, always be. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're this technically, part we're not supposed to be using this. Well, I think there's an agreement. Well, this part we're not supposed to be using. Not, well, whatever part. This they're, allowing us, they're allowing us to walk across it. They're allowing us. Right. Any one time, someone can go in there. And say, hey. See? So here it is, right here. That's the road. Yeah. So here's Apple Tree. Right? So we come up here, and this looks like the gas line. Right. Okay. 
So the gas line goes right across, right, right, right through their front yard. Yeah, that's right. right. Okay, right. And then comes over here, right. And you're walking through by somebody else's front yard. Yeah, but that, that okay. That, that, yeah. As opposed to so coming like right. in over here. Yeah, I think so. And cutting through like this. It may not be pertinent, I mean, but it's I, interesting. I okay. We have the Can bidet is connective, as you said. I mean, we, we have the right have to connect. A person I'm not in favor of disconnecting the line. bidet. Don't understand me, but I don't see the point of keeping a With a right of way. Well, we, we don't have to get the front lot to get the anyhow, if, to get if, the lot. If they want to sell the parcel, why? why the front lot is now sold. The front house is now sold. Yeah, but it's time. Guy tells him you can't do that. It's not in my good that you have a right and to it's really not there. A lot of people can, they don't want to get I've been doing it for years. So the guy goes off be, to work. If we make that recommendation, comes home at four o'clock. Then there's going to be there is now a chain link fence yeah. straight across yeah. there, yeah. and there's no way to get around it. I mean, well, they I carry this into the, the woods. The people that say that, but if it's going to cost the committee, technically, I think the committee already. Yeah, you can use what we have right away. But uh, find it something is different. dead to me. That it's a dead more, end. You know, when it goes down to the private so person's property, it's so steep. That You're an attorney, right. Right. Unless, unless there's an easement. Unless there is an easement, there right. is no easement. Right. So my my personal recommendation is we need to get the easement corrected so that it follows the Blaze Trail. That's my my feel. Right, but but I think then that's like, but we can't change too. we can't change the gas company easement. No. And I so I, but I would contend that the, the property owners aren't going to say, "Yeah, you can restrict the use of our property." Right. I don't think so either. Uh, yeah, I, not without. At least Honestly, I, I wouldn't say. Being, yeah, you being, can. You can. Just, I'll yeah, give you an easement. Compensated. Because right now I don't care. But then I try to sell my house and say, "Oh, by the way, people can cross your land." Well, not only that, but I mean, but, they, but that's already in place. Yeah, but who right. does? Well, we don't know. So we can put the easement. The problem is the adjoining parcel. Well, but but the person's not going to give you an easement right. because when it goes, say he wants to sell his house, he's going to say, "Oh, by the way, I gave uh, well, I that, gave the town an easement." But that same back. person's going to going to have to tell whoever purchases a house that the gas line goes right through the property and oh, a that's on the deed. Swatch, swatch through there that people can just but, walk through. Well, how right. about, how so that's about the somebody falls on that? The alternative. The alternative, I mean, we, why we don't can, we suggest? We, we can suggest change, that they ask for an easement, but we don't know that we're going to get them. The chances are we don't, don't even get think it. we want an easement, no? No, I don't think we want an easement. I think the best thing is recommend we sell the property and get out of it and take the money. What's the annual I cost disagree. that we have for... Uh... We have an easement. I don't think we need to get another one. Right. I, I don't think we can... Because there's I no point in getting an easement only on... Okay, what you're talking about getting an easement on is only... It doesn't a go third. through the private property anyhow. Of this trail. No, my, the blue trail. I, I'm recommending getting a proper easement on the current electronic property the that matches the blue trail. So, and so, so that then, if we sell, 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 sell this parcel, we can have Well, that's different. That's what I'm saying. You're going to get it from the other property. They can ask for an easement, but if they can't get it, then we sell it. But my question is let's say I'm hiking on that trail and I fall and I get hurt. Rich, where are you hiking? He's hiking the, the gas trail. Line or you're hiking the no, on the white, on the you trail, hike? and the other person's property. <laughs> They're responsible, right? Uh, limited. Well, well I think oh, if you let me walk on there, yeah, that's and you got a trail there. No, right? exactly. well, that's not responsible. It's not something yeah, exactly. you can easily yeah. litigate. Huh? It's not something you can easily. Li I've heard. I don't this. know. There's the attorney there. If if you if you are allowing the public on a limited part of your property. And someone breaks their leg, you are not going to be liable for it. I don't I, oh, I no, I totally and, disagree. And, and they'll, and that's, they'll, 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 that's really relevant to the topic of selling it, Enoch Drive, is it? No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we're getting way I think, I this think, uh, let's take. I think we should take a vote and see if we should just sell it the way it is and that's it. Or and get out of it. I, at least at, if, if Jason wants to. Try to ask for an easement somehow, but but I mean I don't think we should have, compensate them for the easement. I Just, think there may be a buyer, and we don't want to lose them. So yeah. What well, do you think, Rich? Uh, what was our initial re uh, recommendation to the board at the last? Meeting? Our our recommendation was that well, first we were under the impression that pedestrian uh, easement on the neighboring property actually followed the blue trail. We were right. under that impression. So we, so we were recommending that 
if this parcel to be, were to be sold, that we would have a pedestrian conservation easement on this parcel connecting with the other to allow the blue trail to be contiguous as it is today. So we weren't the gas line ran this way, the same as the blue trail? Uh, we were under the impression the pedestrian easement was this blue line. Yeah, we thought we, we thought there was an easement on, on those other properties, right? Yeah. And we found out there is. So we found out there's nothing. Nothing in any of the. No, the only easement is the gas line right. property. Right. 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 So we can, act, we can actually gas. So regardless of whether we sell the, the the property or, or we don't, the the gas line property is still the it's only still easement. There. Right. The right. easement is still there. I mean, I, and I, 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 I won't like be able to be used, but it it still connects the trails. Is what I'm trying to. Say. Yeah, yeah. It probably won't break our greenway. It, it technically won't break the greenway. Right. And, uh, and, and because there is a passage we'll then we'll break break through, but that passage will destroy the environment on that slope if, if we're forced to use it. That's what we're saying now. I mean, we'd have to see what, the, we'd have to see the volume, and there's other ways I think that that slope can be corrected. Not in a 10 foot wide path, because that's all we have, is 10 feet wide, well, straight down that hill. Go and stand at the bottom so of that hill. We can make steps going down there. How, how often is that used? Feet wide. No, yes, steps but they've got to be for 100 <laughs> feet. Are you proposing to feet. approach this joining landowner to get an easement for a portion that's on their property, and if they agree to it, therefore then the town, we can put an easement on this parcel prior to selling it. Is that right. what you're that saying? Right, would, that would make an easement on 31 Enoch meaningful if we can get the easement on the Latronica property. Right to align with the current right. the blue trail. So why don't, that's an option, I mean, or just not getting an easement, or choosing not to do it at all. Right. Right. So, I mean, my, my feeling is that I would like to see it corrected in some way, uh, and not have to worry down the road about well, I'd like to maintain losing the, the blue trail, trail as it is. I'd like to maintain the blue trail. But Again, I think you'd have to come up with some type of an agreement, I guess, with the Latronica property. But again, it's going to come, it's still going to come into, it's going to I mean, it's easier. I mean, so so if we lose this piece here, or you're talking about getting the easement at the top. Of it's the all the same. It's actually, it, so on this, this, this has got the, the red lines mark out what it is. Right. The blue trail from Round Hill goes across Latronica right. into the town property. And then back on Back to Latronica, back to town. Back to Latronica. Right. So it's all dealing with the same. So if we could get parcel. them to agree to let us use an easement, they have to give us an easement. The property as opposed to cutting through. But this isn't Latronica over here, is it? That little. No. That, no, little, that little corner. And remember, this map is. Right, yes. Not, not exact. Right. We're, not, we're not down to inches here. We're down to right. 100 foot accuracy on this map here. Is there any other part area where the blue trail is crossing and state road? Or is this the only place in town? Oh yeah, it crosses sixty seven. It crosses. It crosses. It crosses center. Yeah. It crosses uh, Rimmon. This is center. the gas okay. line. Okay. Right. Yeah, I just said state road. I mean, I'm more. It I comes out. It comes out on Rimmon. I ended up on Rimmon one time. This is Newman's yeah, property yeah. here. It comes, comes out on Rimmon. Coming here and then down here. And then Newman's, Newman's not going to give you an easement on his property. Have you seen the gorgeous house he's got up there? Yeah, the trails cross state roads and town roads throughout the town. Yeah. Who has an easement? Who has to get an easement from? Directed traffic signal either. Herb Newman, the architect. I mean, you, right oh, down okay. near the, uh, the parking lot, the center, the, yeah. the, the center of ball use, fields. Have you seen this house? It's up crosses right there, right. Um, right. just on the other side of the parking lot. I doubt. Cross goes behind yeah, town hall, goes right. up onto right. the uh, Newton Street, the and so you can see your town. I think, and, if, I think and, if we could sell it, and and the, the property doesn't create a problem with an easement on it, we go along with it. But if we can't sell it because of the easement, then I'm saying forget the easement. How do you know, how you know that? Unless we attempt we to sell easement. it. If we, if we, you know, if the property could be sold, and an easement you know, could if be put on the, the property. If the buyer will accept the terms of the easement, you, it's still going to dead end. I, I, don't, I don't really care, but I'm saying that if, in fact, the person that buys the property has no problem with an easement on it, and it's able to be sold, sell it with an easement. If you can't do that, the person said, look, I don't want any easement on my property, 
then you sell it the way it is, and you, and you just keep the Greenway Trail that goes along like you had it. Well, it's, it's worth more without that easement. And you'd have to first get the Latronica permission to put the easement it, on it, their it, parcel. It don't make sense, make really, sense. to have that easement when you don't have one on the other ones. No. Right. Well, it's only one corner, though. It, it, I mean, one, one. you know, in, in this property, I don't know if it would be a problem to have a, an easement there because... Has anyone approached this landowner about this issue of... Uh, no, because this came just to my attention yesterday. So I, my feeling is that we should talk to the current owner and see what their feeling is on I agree with that. the passage as it stands today. Because I'm confident that they would much rather have pedestrian travel where that blue line is than where that pink line is. But, and when it's but, presented to them as the, as the alternative, but do you is think the they're going to give us a lease gas line trail? That's the easement for travel. Not necessarily. They may, they may realize agree. that they're, they're going to they're going to end up with two easements on their property. Yeah, but they you might you want two they, easements or, on your or, property, or you can change it. You can change well, the pedestrian. Well, why can't you change the pedestrian? Jason has easement. a good point. They they might want to. They might rather see it here than, than going right through the gas lines, go right through the center of their property. Is it correct? Yeah. It, it might be a better place. But they have, have two easements on their property. Well, no, we can't because the gas company, yeah, it's the They will have two easements on well, their the, property. It's not a pedestrian, it's not a pedestrian. Uh, yeah, right. I see what you're getting at. Right. I mean, would you like two easements on your property? Yeah, I understand what you're getting well, So what are the two easements, Sandy? The, the gas company and the blue trail over here. But the gas well, that, company that, won't be affected if we remove the pedestrian walkway out there. This, is, this so needs an easement. It's still an easement. It is. Same property, though. It is still an easement. But the this gas company yeah, will be walking through the This is somebody else's property. property. Yeah, no one will notice this that. This corner, and this is just an error in mapping. It essentially goes Latronica, town, Latronica, town. Okay, so it's only one property. Right. But he just gets two portions that has easements. All right, there's the gas line easement. And currently, there's a gas line easement with a pedestrian easement on top of it. And my thought is, why don't we just ask to move the pedestrian easement off of the gas line? So, Because right now, he's got a sign on his property that says, private property, do not enter. Because there is an unwritten agreement that pedestrian traffic can go off this way. So why not offer changing the easement for pedestrian travel to follow the blue trail and put up proper signage right. saying... Private property, blue trail this way, right. to direct people yeah, to keep that on the blue trail. What's Good suggestion if you'll accept that. In other words, cut out right here. the easement on the, on on the on gas line. Right. And drawing. Basically, take Change the, the, the pedestrian yeah. easement and the slide it over to match the blue trail. Right. 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 Don't you think that's right. the first thing that should be done before you talk about the other easement on the landowner? Which easement is that? In other words, talk to talk to the property owner right. that's got the going through the transmission. I that's mean, what we're talking about. So the people who have the easement for the the gas company, and then there's a there's a pedestrian easement on top of that. So you've got two easements right on top of each other that go right through the property. So so to your point, we would take the pedestrian easement easement and we'd slide it over here to put it into the woods. He still has two easements. We're not adding an easement. They're just sliding the pedestrian no, we are, over we here. We don't have an easement for the blue trail. The blue trail. Is I'm no, saying, no, no, move it over to the blue yeah. trail. <laughs> so tell them instead of instead of going through your pro, through your your lawn, we'll direct people to the blue trail. We're still going across your property, but it's in the woods now. It's not in the grass. Right. But it's and still then still as it goes, on but, his property. but he right. had to already. He's got a, he, he, yes, he, he does. He has the gas, gas company and, gas and the pedestrian on top right, of it. But it's only one Weird. way to traverse. Here. It's, it's, it's one just and two. the same. That's two, right, but it's one. But the gas company is still, it's still two easements. So what you're saying is get rid of the pedestrian and, and bring it over yeah. here. You're right. still going to have the yeah. gas one, right? Right. And, and you're still going to have the pedestrian because right. you're not going to take it off. Right. But he'll it's still have two. Still at the end of the day, it's still two. You're not you're adding it. You absolutely do mow it here. Well, then so you're not adding it. You are. That's what you're saying. You're adding another easement. No, we're just taking the easement like this and sliding it to the side. But I understood. And directing the people through the woods instead of over the grass. But I understood he never had the easement for the woods. No, 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 we're not talking about oh, that. We're, talking about we're taking about, so you've got the gas line, yeah, right. and 
then on top of the gas line is the pedestrian. Absolutely. Okay, so you take the pedestrian, make it the blue trail. Yeah, all right, you're going to take the gas So what you're going to do is you're going to put a sign up here that says private property, don't walk across my grass. Okay. Where you were allowed to walk over my property on the gas line, now please walk through the woods. And then if you purchase this like property here, it just goes yeah. yeah. down. And then you get down to the bottom. That's a great solution. Yeah, but if you the get to the bottom, then you that. That's, 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 it actually is better for no, the No, it's the same property at the bottom. Right here. It's the same property. Yeah, but I'm saying... I think we should do that. Don't we what do we do? Write them a letter or do we apologize? How do we go about it? It's going to be a little complicated, to be honest with you. Well, I think as, as long as the easement can be worded, what, what happened when we go. When this was discussed, this, 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 like what happened at last night's meeting? It was, was it, just it was the, just it was just as confusing as it is right now, right? Oh, okay. Because be, because, because the feeling that. the feeling yeah. from several of the board of selectmen is that if we put an easement on thirty one Enoch, it's an easement to nowhere, right? Because there's right. no connection. That's right. Insane. So my suggestion is let's make a connection possible. Where it's but can we use the commission? No, we would just say yes. We have ask. to direct the board of selectmen to, to, to approach the homeowner. Like I don't know what our authority is on that. Well, I'll speak with uh, Ellen in town council, but uh, they could certainly appoint me to speak with the landowner. I don't know this. this, this it this would make common. more sense for the landowner to have 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 the. I would be surprised if the landowner would go for it. I don't know. I would find out surprised. If what is the landowner going to say be now? off to property and into the woods. Right now, they're directing. He's directing people to the blue trail, as I understand it now. Right. He's right directing there, people there. There's a yes. sign right so there. So we move over. So why don't we just make that official? Do not enter. And, and move it out of his way. Right. 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 What was the value of his property? He doesn't. I don't think it does. Because you still. But they can't. There's still people walking over his property, but now they're walking through the woods. They're not walking through his grass. So, I understand that. So all we're doing is we're just directing people to the right. Yeah. And we can put an easement on this because we still own this. So we sell it. We can the only thing. Along <clears throat> My feeling is if we can get the easement corrected on electronic property, then it'll just follow it makes, through to this. It makes this discussion a lot more not easier. Clear. Because if, if so, the discussion the, is not really should we put an easement on the Enoch property. The discussion is now. If we could get the owner, if we could get the landowner, right? If we could get them to agree to uh, maintain, allow us to maintain the blue trail through their property, as opposed to through their yard. So ask them if we can move the pedestrian uh, easement to the right mm -hmm. to actually follow the blue trail, and then. It'll go through the town on the property and then come back at the bottom of his property. And if he purchases this piece anyway, then we just continue right. it through. Or, or if the town were to sell that and somebody else bought it, maybe right, it would have we, could, we, could, we could put that easement in place. That's not, a, that's not an easily developed piece of property. No. So the easement's not going to help? Currently, no. But you, I, I, they make I don't it hard to, to sell that parcel. By having this easement, it takes away from the value of that property that he's talking about. It'd be good. harder to sell that property unless we were selling it to the person that had the, the same person. But but as a conservation commission, are we trying to make it easier for people to sell property, or are we trying to protect our trails and greenways and, and natural resources? But the sale of that property will get, allow us funds to protect other areas, areas too. Right. 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 I, I, this leads out to the main state road. I, I, sure. would, I would very much caution everybody's hopes and aspirations that the funds from the sale of this property going anywhere into open space. No, they're going to go to the channel. It goes like every other. That goes I thought one of the requests and that they're they're it's our recommendation. Right, exactly. Right, but in the end, it's still it's still reducing or, I, I, I don't know. So, so, I mean, my contention is that we want to protect our trails and our... Correct. Our but we don't want to protect it at a cost either. Well, I mean, the bottom line, don't forget, the town is paying the cost of... Uh, they're going to have to do something with What's the road. What's the annual maintenance cost right now? $1,800. $1,800 a year? So that's... Uh, 50 that's cents. How about the repairs? No, that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's not counting the repairs. That's not counting the road. The repairs. Right, well, so, so, so the road is once every 10 years... A ten thousand dollar. Encourage that either. No, 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 it looks like so it needs it now. It doesn't need it now. So let's say, that's why it's going on. So let's say it's doing it. it averages to three thousand dollars a year to yeah. keep this parcel, and there's three thousand homeowners. It's a dollar a house. These are all 
connected this whole system in terms of maintaining it. But aside from that, Interesting. I, I, I think that we need to try and correct the. I agree. I think you should. Uh, I think we should do that. Here. Can we make a motion to have you speak with the oh, no. uh, first selectman <laughs> in town council to yeah. see if you could approach the homeowner to discuss this? I still also, though, just for the record, have an issue with the safety factor too. Like about the town encouraging people by leaving this connection. It's also encouraging. You know, I don't think it's going to happen. Encouraging that crossover there, which is not a very safe place we to cross. Time. Well, it's there now. I mean, they, right? Yes, there. It's been there it's for there now thirty years. 40 and it's years. just underutilized because of I'm sure because of the lack of maintenance. Well, plus there's nowhere to park on Amity Road, <laughs> right? And there's nowhere really to park up on Enoch. And there are a number of trails that. Well, another reason that we're trailheads where you can't having park to cross. Yeah, but much better trails than this particular trail. Correct, but it's also maintaining um, a, con a continuous <laughs> green line. Which I think is what the issue. If is. it's been there for so long, maintain it. and nobody's protested it, isn't it like evidence of occupation? Anyhow, that that, that <laughs> almost belongs there. But you know, we we, <laughs> we, we, we almost argue that. You know, we run the risk. Going to the land, land owner and saying, you know, hey, we, we, we would you like to we'd like to put an easement through your property here, and he's going to take the easement gonna, from here and put it over here. Yeah, yeah. We'd like to relocate the pedestrian. Relocate. And then, and then he says, well, you know, I, you don't really don't have one. Right. You mean we, I don't we have, have an easement? We say no. Actually, we do. We can walk right through your grass, or we can walk through the woods. Yeah. Right. But I so, think it's just an option. And then the person says, hmm. Well. And they can walk through my grass, and it doesn't. I don't have to worry about if anybody falls. Or if they walk through my grass, my uh, if they walk through the the way I'm sending them now, I'm liable. You're liable. So no now you walk. What? You're liable no matter what. If if they if they walk down that slope straight to Route 63, they're gonna more likely get hurt. Than where the other, but the town the is, then the is covered by it, not the not the homeowner. No, if the, the homeowner. If, the, if they follow the gas pipeline easement, that's all on <laughs> his property. It doesn't matter. That's that's an easement that the gas company has. Right, but they're going to fall on that hill. That's fine, yeah. and they're, they're going to sue the homeowner, and, and it's going to be on his property. But, but the homeowner will be dropped. You can ask Robin. Will, won't the homeowner be dropped off because it's not? It's an easement, and the easement occurs is going to be. You, fought, you fell on the easement? I mean, you can sue the homeowner, but the, it, the Actually, insurance company is going to You can't ask Robin. This is a question I think that I would like to know the answer to about the, the You're going to point out the liability to him, and he's going to close it. I don't have the answer to you. Him. No, no, no. What? I don't have that answer for you. No, but I'm saying, I'd if like we to point this out is. to him, there is. he can close down the, the, the greenway right then and there and say, no, I, I'm going to put up a sign, no trespassing, period. Don't come on my property. But he, well, he can, can still on walk the gas through. Line. You can still walk the gas line, fine. The gas line. Right. But now the town and the gas company are going to be responsible for any accidents that occur. Well, that's the case. Well, that's, that's the case, case not the town. Right. That's right. But it's not on his property where we don't have an easement. <laughs> Basically, what he's saying is no one's going to walk this way if they are aware of the steepness of this hill. And he can say, now, that, since you don't have an easement, or by listening to this tape, <laughs> that there is no easement here, so you can't walk here either. Right, so you exactly. can walk here, but be careful because this is what's ahead of you. Yeah. Well, I get. I, I, mean, I can also you know, guarantee. That's why I asked if anyone's already spoken to them. I mean, obviously they must be aware of this. People won't stay in that ten foot buffer on that steep grade, even if he told people to walk through his front yard. They they will go off of it just logistically. They will walk off of it uh -huh. to get so down. And you wouldn't blame But Jason, take take. Let's take the and, let's take and, and uh, let's take a worst case scenario. His property. What happens if <laughs> if the landowner now turns around and says, "I'm putting up signs, no trespassing." I thought I you, the town had an easement that was there. It's not now. I don't want him on my property. Okay. Then they'll walk through his front yard. So so they'll walk through his front yard. To nowhere though. To nowhere. No, they'll walk through his front yard down that steep hill to Route 63. But, but, but as they go down that steep hill, they're going to find it's too steep to walk straight but, down. But, so they're going to start going off of that easement back and forth naturally onto his property back and forth. Which is what you did today. Yeah. To find right. it. Right. Well, I said, yeah. Right. Essentially. Is I what think I was done. mostly, I was probably You're crossing on over both, and both pieces right. of property, not but, knowing But it kind of sounds like it. everybody thought we had an easement. With right. This. Right. And that was so, the point so, that so, so why not? Why not meet our expectations? 
you know. So I'm going to tomorrow. I'm going to walk that uh, the power line or the gas line. Yeah. See what that. Well, what about the th the thirty one email? Take a machete with you. Yeah. Very <laughs> difficult parcel hey, to build. Clear that way. Right. Is this flat terrain uh, here that we'd be taking an easement? Is this portion that would be buildable? Which no. is the portion that's the buildable? only buildable part is <laughs> that. Right so it's not going to affect that. It, 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 it might be a quarter acre that's buildable. Maybe well, on that. You can go around in a circle and around in a circle. Yeah. 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 Let's just, can we so make a motion that, that you approach the landowner yeah. and, 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 and ask him for permission? Well, approach, approach, approach the first elected to town attorney to see if you can talk to the landowner. So that's my motion. And we can move on to the next item. Is everyone clear on the motion? I have a second. Is that the motion? The motion is to have Jason speak to the first selectman and the town attorney to see if it's okay for him to approach the landowner to discuss moving the pedestrian easement from the gas line to the blue trail. Yeah. Right. To the wooded area, wherever. And then we work from there. I second that well, then, motion. I end my Desert motion action. with <laughs> I second moving the pedestrian so, so, walk what, uh, so, pedestrian easement to the blue trail. So, so everybody's clear on the motion? All right, I'm going to call the question. All in favor of that motion, say aye. Opposed? Oh, no, I'm not opposed. <laughs> because you can no, only do no, one. No, 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 no. You can only vote. Okay. Okay. Right. I know, I know. So the motion I know in town elections I've seen you there two or three times. But <laughs> what, this, what I'm saying myself is that if in fact that doesn't work out, Right, then we, we, that, we, then talk, we talk, talk about it, about it and we go next back meeting. and right. talk about what we're right. going to come put back it. and talk about it. But I think In other words, we're not going to say, okay, if they, they give us an easement here, then we'll look at putting an easement on the property. Right, but let's sell we'll, we'll deal with that at the next meeting. Right, we'll deal with it when we have to get, get a feeling. Yeah, let's not land get, get ahead of ourselves. He doesn't right. want to do that. So yeah. next, the like last few items. I'm yeah, that's a short Then we'll just sell it. The last two items on the agenda. Um, I'm actually going to table um, just for the sake of time. Um, one of them was to discuss the deep open open space watershed acquisition grant. Um, it has a deadline of March 1st. Um, I encourage all members to actually take a look at what the grant requires. Um, in general, you can get 65% of whatever you're applying for. Typically, well, it's an acquisition grant, so it would be cost of acquisition, acquiring something. You can get 65% reimbursed through the grant. Um, I was hoping we'd have time to talk about ideas of what we might look at. Maybe Park Lane. We have 57 Park Lane as a potential. Park, we looked at it last last park, year around this time. Right, well. Park Lane looked like a... It's, well, Park Lane is adjacent to, to, to town, right, town yeah. property, which... Right. And, and, is there an Indian burial ground there, too? And the... And, and, Rumor has that there is an Indian burial ground in that area. No one has been able to. But the deadline's here. March 1st? The deadline no, is March 1st. We should work quickly because if we can grab that, we can put a casino on the property. And <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Please. Uh, but as as the yeah. commissioner mentioned yeah. tonight, it's yeah. an yeah. annual yeah. grant. Yeah. Uh, it was March 1st last year. This year. It's March 1st this year. year. It'll be March 1st next year. Okay. So we don't feel by March 1st we'll be able to prepare to, to take a shot at. Park Lane? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, what I'm thinking about doing is uh, doing a lot of legwork on that grant towards that direction, and if the this if I bring it to the commission in February, we can make some decision on it at that point. Sure. And if it's no good, we'll just... Well, it, it's, it's got work. some potential that it's up for sale. Right. <clears throat> it is it's good. I mean, that's, you know, we're not going to try to buy a property that's not for sale. Right. We're but, talking about buying. Has anybody approached him to how much he's looking for on that property? There was up for sale at one hundred and fifty thousand. Oh, okay. Um, so I will bring more information about that and the grant at our next meeting. Well, you know, if we sell the other property, so you're not going last time. We have yeah. the funds to. We would have, you know, could ask the uh, board of finance if we can take one hundred and fifty thousand and buy that property. Which makes more sense because it's connected on what two sides, I think. But that would be for next March. That would not happen this year, potentially. So we'll we'll no. Uh, I will bring information to February's meeting about this because if we sold that piece and asked them as a favor to do right. the other, so, so we'll we'll come back to this. Okay. All right, taxes. The last next to last 
Uh, this is very brief. Discussing our next steps on the wildlife action plan, I think the commissioner spoke already on several areas that we might want to address in terms of looking at what we could contribute to it. Uh, I think the commission members here should all take a look at the plan that's on the deep page right now. It's not light reading. No, it's not. It's something on the order of 80 pages or something. Well, a lot of the pages are endangered or well. Right. There's a lot of information there, but it, it's a good starting point for our own commission to consider what we might want to put into our own wildlife and habitat management plans. You had something about grasslands. Is, is there any big open area? I'm thinking about uh, uh, the Shepherd Farms. Do we have anything there that, that we acquired that would do that? For the water, for the acquisition grant? For, for, for yeah, they, they said something about grassland uh, habitat, creating a grassland habitat. Uh, I think the town on part over there is mostly the ridge and where the trail goes. It's, it's mostly wooded there. There's, there's yeah. not any, yeah. any good uh, But we've got land. the Fitzgerald open fields over yeah. here. Yeah, um, we might think about doing something there. Yeah. So I, so I to, guess, what's to go back to the initial question about the, the, uh, <clears throat> was it the wildlife action plan? Yeah. Yeah. He's asking us to read the six chapters and make comments on the six chapters. Is that basically what he's asking us to do? I mean, because I just printed out uh, the chapter on Connecticut's wildlife distribution and abundance determination of species of greater conservation need. And like you said, it's like, you know, just that part is just that, just that chapter. It's 20 pages, probably, 15, 20. Yeah, it's uh, <coughs> 26 pages long. So I guess are they asking us to read this and say, hey, we think you should change this? Or Yes, no. yes, that's what they're asking for. They're yes, asking for us to take a look at what they've put together. And what input? And, and offer input. Uh, my feeling is that we would probably end up gleaning more information than offering. Right. You know, <coughs> like, yeah, it's... Yeah. You know, we really couldn't add anything about how the uh, the woodland bat is should be or, or very important as opposed to you know important or the, or the one endangered snake that was seen behind the Amity High School. So now we've got uh, uh, there was yeah, yeah. that's that we, I, I I don't have the detail on that, but that that's our little claim to fame. Someone saw a super special snake over there, got a pin on the map for it. Interesting. Well, they. Um, there was a salamander that kept uh, someone from building on Burnt Swamp Road for mm. approximately six years. Yeah. Because every year they'd go back and look and the salamander would be there. <laughs> Under the same So it's a protected salamander. But, mm. So those are the types of things they're looking for us to, I guess, I mean, I don't really know what we could add. This is really technical. I'd like to know what he wants to do with the wild turkeys. Thanksgiving just went by. The equity. The, the uh, yeah, gamey. Yeah. Uh, but I, I encourage all of us to actually take a look at it. And Hundreds of pages. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it is <laughs> of interest in different areas to everybody. Pick an area and. Uh, you can read about the grassland birds. No, he can't. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I, 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 I think about grassland birds. How about black bear? Yeah, but the brown bear. But take brown a look. Bear. Okay. All right. So, so if, the, uh, if anything, uh, help focus. <laughs> focus on invasive no, species. No, no, what? What? Invasive species. They claim focus that that, on that's uh, you know getting. Uh, and Betsy can focus on climate change. Betsy's ready to go. I have two of those on my head. I have ready to go too. All right, so the last item on the agenda. Any seat, they call it. All right, guys. Uh, not I need a uh, subject. I need a gavel. Can we do it? Go, 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 go. So, Chairman's report. <laughs> I have one item to report on. The Historic Preservation Technical Assistance Grant that was filed and written and submitted back in the summer of last year. And then the state didn't have anybody up there processing any of this. Well, the state does have somebody that was recently hired. Uh, they could not find our complete submission, so our consultant resubmitted, and it will be reviewed as soon as they get to it. Um, our consultant will notify us when that happens. So 
It's a very small step forward. This is for what? That's the that's Water houses. Authority houses. The houses. Oh, okay. And their nomination to the historic registry. The registry. Registry. So the state has somebody that's going to be reviewing it, and we're hoping to have information as soon as so possible. Let, let's hope the houses don't fall down by the time they... <laughs> what? It looked like it was in bad shape. Yeah. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All oh, second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Thank you. Great. 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 Great.